Hello and welcome to Trading Growth and Value Stocks. My name is James Boyd. We welcome you here today. Lee Bull is in the chat. We welcome him and uh, he'll be off for a couple days. So uh, wish him well. And uh, we have David with us, uh, Eva, Sarir, Papa Jeep, Matt, and many others. We welcome all of you. Now we'll talk about the market after the Fed's Jerome Powell actually made some statements and comments. And uh, we'll look at that. And also we'll kind of talk about our uh, the existing portfolio. Is there any action steps that might need to be considered? We'll take a look at that. Uh, just real quick, uh, I normally teach at this time. We are on week five of eight. I will show you the lineup momentarily. Just real quick as we get started, remember that the information here is for general informational purposes only. Should not be con uh, considered an individualized recommendation or endorsement of any particular security, chart pattern, or investment strategy. Now, also remember that Schwab does not uh, recommend the use of technical analysis as a sole means of research. In our classes, we use both fundamentals and technicals. And for many of you out there, you even look at the macro market as well. So you use maybe all of it. Now, remember, as we get started, we will be using the Paper Money software application. Also remember when we talk about dividends, there's risk associated investing in dividend stocks. Uh, we know uh, what those risks are. We'll mention those here more today. And also remember the past performance uh, is no guarantee of future results. Investing in stocks also has risk. Now, we'll take a look at the, kind of the market and how the Fed's Jerome Powell had the market close with one of it, with a comment uh, that kind of really took the market down. And we'll kind of talk about how maybe we might take some steps in the portfolio. Uh, we will also, for example, kind of mention we are on week five, okay? So as we get into agenda item number two, our focus here today will be really taking a look at comparing stocks fundamentally and technically and picking a potential investment. There's a lot of discussion about, hey, I'm going to look at this stock or that stock, but kind of what are some of the differences? I mean, how do you compare a stock maybe uh, in terms of a technical lens and also fundamentals? I I'd like to kind of look at that here today. Now, also just real quick uh, with that is, uh, we will also, uh, there's been some questions in the chat, so I will make sure uh, Eva had a question on a three for one stock split. We will look at that as well. So first agenda item, let's look at the market. Second agenda item, we'll look and see if there's any action steps in the portfolio. The bulk of the focus is gonna be spent on the week number five, comparing stocks fundamentally and technically and picking a potential investment. Now, first off, let's take a quick look at how the Dow ended. The Dow pretty much held in there until Fed's Jerome Powell, and notice how they always wait to the end, okay? The market was expecting that maybe those rate cuts, they had a decent chance of maybe even getting a rate cut as soon as March. He made a comment and he goes, we're not um, necessary. He goes, you know, the, the Fed might not cut in March. Was that pretty much what he stated? And what you're going to notice is the market was like, wait, we had kind of built that into the expectation or at least a probability of it. And the market went down eight tenths of 1%. You're going to notice that at the end of this, re pretty large red candle fading off the high did not break support. But what you're going to see is kind of a little fade here. Now, fast forward a month, fast forward two months or three months or four months. Today might just be like a little blip in the road. So I, I think it's kind of important to kind of here to kind of make mention, look, it's one day. It did not really change the trend, but we are seeing in the short term, if you look at, let's say, the SPX, okay? When you look at the SPX, the difference in the S&P 500 is, we did see a sh the shorter term moving average go red. Now for some investors or traders, especially traders, they might say, I saw a sell signal here today for those investors. If we look at, let's say, kind of where that support level is, that breakout area, I should say, is probably right around 4,800. We're still above it, but a little checking back. Now remember, trends are not just higher highs. Trends are higher highs and higher lows. The pullbacks, whatever the reason is, is a part of the trend. Matter of fact, the pullback and where it pulls back to is probably more important than the higher high, okay? Now, if you look at kind of where maybe some damage was done, it was done in the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ 
did not just have a red line on the shorter term moving average. It was a crossover. So remember, we kind of talk about red line on the shorter term moving average, strike one. Moving average crossover, steer right two. And then strike three would really be where you have both lines in the moving average, red, and the crossover, okay? And the NASDAQ really saw some more selling here today. For that effect, what's in these two portfolios? We're going to take two or three stocks, and let's answer that question. Some of you like to look at the Russell. The Russell did get pushed down more. We don't talk about the small caps as much because there's been so much to talk about with the large caps, but kind of a rejection at that 2000 level if you are a small cap type of investor. Okay, now, we saw what happened with the S&P and the NASDAQ. So remember, our stocks, they're a boat on the ocean of the market, and that market is the indexes, okay? Now, I'm gonna go to the monitor tab, and what I wanna do is I wanna look at just maybe two, three stocks, and I'm gonna give you a little pop quiz on whether they are sell signals potentially, and what kind of, is it one, two, or three, and you tell me. So I'm gonna take, now remember, it's just gonna be stocks only. So don't look at anything at the bottom, you're not allowed to. Stocks only. If we looked at AMAT, by the way, we're in the IRA account, tell me, is this a sell signal? Tell me what step it is, one, two, or three, okay? So if I pull up AMAT, now remember, when we talk about, this class is on trading and investing, okay? So if we looked at AMAT and said, what do you see? Well, what we for sure see is the short-term moving average. That's been read for about the last four days. So if someone sold on step one, short-term moving average being read, uh, the investor sells, that's been read for four days. If we said, look, I'm going to sell if the lagging moving average goes red, that, that criteria was met today. And if you look at when the crossover happened, you might even say it was uh, Monday, okay? So if we said, did it do all three things if you want more of a confirmation? And the answer is what? Yeah. So the answer is three. Now, here's what happens. Yeah, but I like AMAT. What does that have to do with the stock at all? I heard it's a good company. I like the fundamentals, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so if you're going to trade technicals, the investor's trading technicals, okay? If the investor says, I want to see the uh, a crossover and both lines red, it's meeting that criteria today, and it doesn't mean if the investor sells, they can never get back in, okay? Now, what you're going to notice is AMAT was purchased at 153.48. What was the date on that? Answer, 124. So one week ago, that was entered, and this is in a week where it went to. Now, what you're going to notice is we're going to right-click on this line, create closing order, going to click on sell, AMAT. Now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to lock in that 1,082, okay? Now, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to click on that. Okay, right click, create closing order, sell. Now, when we do that, we're trying to lock in that game. Okay, we're going to go ahead and confirm and send. We're saying sell 100 shares of the stock at this price or higher. Now, what we need to be careful of is if tomorrow's market opens up lower, the market is closed. Okay, what we really need some help with is if tomorrow's market, let's say, opens lower. We might say, well, I have a sell order. Well, that might not fill, okay? So the, the investor is probably going to be watching the open tomorrow, even if it's on a think or swim mobile device, a phone, a pad, or a computer, whatever. They're just making sure how close to that area is the potential fill. Do not assume anything, okay? I'm going to send the order. No commission, send. Now, so that's number one. We're going to go back to the margin account, okay? Now, remember, what would give us the gist that there's maybe some cells here? Well, based on when you looked at the NASDAQ, that was the one that kind of showed the steepest sell-off of the three, Dow, S&P, NASDAQ. If we looked at AMD and asked the same question, okay, hey, on AMD, it was there or is there any signs of selling? Again, if you make your selling decisions, confusing, the investor is probably going to struggle in execution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the shorter term moving average, which is this one, which is closer to the price. 
I'm going to ask a yes or no question. Is that line green or red? It's red. Okay. So see, very difficult. Second question I'm going to ask myself, the lagging moving average, it, which is the 20 period moving average, correct? Is that line green or red? It's red. Okay. So I'm at strike two already. Third question. Did we have a crossover to the downside? Yes or no question. Okay. And what you're now going to see is there it is right there. We got all three. Okay. So the purpose of one, two, three is to show like early signs of exiting, which would be trying to get out sooner without confirmation. And if you're going to wait to the third step, you're saying, I want to see more confirmation. Now, what you need to understand is the confirmation is not free. See, if we if the investor would have sold when it first did that first red line on the moving average, that was on the 29th. That was when the stock was at 177. So to finally get the confirmation, the stock now is at 167. You see why some people sell on that shorter term moving average going red? Well, now that the investor has confirmation, they say, okay, now I have confirmation. It wasn't free. That $10 down in price on 100 shares of stock was $1,000. Okay? Now, maybe that's chump change for you. You wouldn't bend over to pick it up, but some people would. Okay? So if we're, if we're saying, I want to wait till all three steps, it's happened now. We're going to right click on that, create closing order, sell. Now, why didn't you start with this? Why don't you take the first seven or eight minutes and talk about current stock examples? Remember, all the trades are done in class. All the trades that we do in class are not buys. They're going to be examples of buys and sells. So I'm going to sell that. And what we're going to do, and this is a paper money account. We, this is in the margin account. We're going to go ahead and sell that and no commission. We're saying sell at that price or higher. This would have the same risk of that other trade that we looked at. The market opens up lower tomorrow. The investor's probably wanting to make sure, does it fill? They might have to move the order down just a little bit, perhaps hope, okay, that maybe it doesn't gap down too bad. Okay, so the NASDAQ kind of looking a little black and blue here today, okay, from today's price action. And it's not ever a good sign when you're looking up at the moving averages, okay? So we talked about the market. We talked about uh, two to three stock positions. We sold two of them. Now we're going to go back to, for example, the meat and potatoes of what we want here to talk, talk about today. Now, when we first got started in the chat, okay, I asked a question regarding which industry groups you were watching. Now, you might be thinking, well, what does it matter to you? Just wanted to know. <laughs> All right. Now, if we take a look at this, okay, what, what did you say here? Which industry groups? Okay. Now, if you don't mind, copy. Okay, so Wiley actually says she is, uh, Wiley is actually looking at uh, staples, okay, uh financials okay health okay and i think now you put ut now i i'm gonna maybe throw in their utilities okay so here we're talking about obviously sectors okay i'm fine with that now anyone else uh matt actually says james when are you doing a seminar in st louis yeah i ben watson that uh, does the seminars they're going to be in dallas on friday uh let me see if I can, or Lee, if you can't share the workshop schedule. They were in uh, San Diego two weeks ago or so. They're going to be in Dallas this weekend. Lee, if you could, if you wouldn't mind, see if you can't share that link. Now, the other one is if we kind of take a look at this, uh, if we're talking about other industry groups that maybe stand out, okay? If we're talking about industry groups, so a lot of you actually said the financials, okay? I'm going to kind of put something in. We're going to label, I'm going to kind of go, uh, industry groups, and you'll see why in just a sec, okay? Banks, I'm going to put insurance, okay? Clearly, we're talking about an industry group. I'm going to also put machinery, okay? And remember, that is going to be in the industrial, okay, sector, okay, slash basic materials, 
Okay. Now, what other industry groups have looked kind of of potential interest? Now, some of you might say, James, I tend to be looking at semis, which is the industry group, and then we obviously know that's tech, the sector. Now, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything before we actually plow into this. The other thing I want to kind of also include right here is maybe steel, okay, which obviously is basic materials, okay? Now, let's kind of, let's do this, okay? So how many of you have ever struggled with picking a potential investment? Anybody? Do you know anyone that lives close to you that struggles with that? You don't have to say their name. I'm not going to ask, okay? Now, I want to kind of talk about this, and I want to break this down in two ways, okay? So first thing I want to kind of do, and I'm going to zoom in on some of these sections, is I want to kind of start with technicals, okay? Now, a lot of you have lots of experience. Some of you have no experience. Some of you don't even know that you don't know, but you're about ready to find out that you might not know as much as you thought you knew. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So if we kind of said, if you were going to pick a stock and you were going to look at the technicals, let's look at the technicals and we'll talk about the fundamentals. What information kind of says this one looks more attractive than the other one? Now, the first thing I want to kind of sit and I'll type that in, okay? Don't just sit there and watch me do it. When we kind of do this, the first thing I want to do is the given is the stock volume, okay? When we say stock volume, we're talking about 1 million plus, okay? average volume okay I, that that should, i'm just saying that's the floor if it doesn't have a million average it doesn't even quantify to go on the sheet of paper now you might say i look at stocks that have less that's fine we don't okay now if you take a look at this now by the way you might say why well it kind of comes back to is if you're going to try to leverage those positions that might be a little struggle now if we talk about technicals and i thought this to myself what are some of the like the five things that maybe an experienced investor might be looking at to kind of say one stock looks more attractive than the other? The one thing that I kind of wrote down is, for example, is the momentum, okay, which we look at the 10 period moving average, trend, which we look at the uh, 30 period moving average. Another thing that we're also going to include in here, which not, should not be a surprise based upon what I taught this week, is relative strength. I'm also going to include a uh, entry setup okay and the fifth thing that i actually put down is when we take a look at this is percent off support okay now let me kind of just do this for just a second so when we say momentum we're saying in this case the 10 ma okay don't don't feel like well which one that's not the point of today's discussion you could pick the exponential or the whole okay if we said trend what's the purpose of this okay the purpose of this if we said uh what are we trying to actually find there we could take the 20 or the 30 period moving average if you use simple exponential whole all of the above okay if we said relative strength all we're doing with relative strength is we're going to look at the stock performance okay compared to the S&P 500, and you'll see that in just a moment. If we said, for example, the entry setup, what would be an example of an entry setup? Well, that would be a hold, a CHG, close higher gap. It would be a breakout. We label as 2055 period, uh, 55 day high. We would also say um, M moving average crossover. The uh, and the other thing we actually made mention of the other day which is, is there maybe a flag setup, okay? So that now we're kind of looking at a price pattern. So these would be some things that maybe an investor would be looking for. Now, this one kind of might strike you as a little odd. Why is percent off support of interest? Well, this kind of really comes down to, well, how much risk you're potentially taking. So let me kind of put this here. So first thing we want to know is here is number one, which moving average is acting as support, okay? Which moving average? Number two, what percent are or is the stock off the moving average? This is going to affect reward risk ratio. This also does tell us something 
uh, uh, also as well uh, of the timing of the entry. What do you mean by that? Well, the higher the percent we are off the support level, okay, the more lagged the entry is, okay? Now, if we kind of now go into the fundamentals of this, okay? Now, by the way, before we do that and kind of cross over here, one thing I kind of want to say and throw in here is what sector. This is really huge. We think all the time that I'm just going to buy a stock and it's going to be immune to everything, and that's not true, okay? So when we look at sector, we should be asking ourselves, is there three to five sectors, three to five sectors that you are focusing on, okay? Now, notice we did not say all of them, but are there three to five sectors that who's focusing on? You, okay? So there has to be specific intent. You're not just buying a stock. It's not immune. It's tied to the industry group. It's tied to the sector. It's tied to the blasted market. So that's going to be a part of that decision as well. Is that maybe a space that you want to get into? Now, just real quick, can we start off with something? And what I want to do here is I want to bring up, I want to start with example given. When we say the industry group, we're going to start with uh, the industry group of, let's, say, let's just say uh, financing. Okay, so when I say financing, what I'm going to really kind of say in this case is we're going to use the example given of MA, which one is that? What's V? Which one is that? Okay. If I also said AXP, which one is that? And also, if I, I'm going to also include two other banks as well. Okay. JPM, I'm also going to include C. Now, what you're now going to notice is the, the first three, they're better comparisons to each other. The business model is more similar, right? If I said JPM and C, now we're talking about banks that have some, some of those products, but kind of they're bigger, okay? Now, the first thing I want to kind of do is we would like to kind of grade what's the momentum. And, and if I said, well, what, what is the momentum? We're going to look and see, is the stock above the 10, yes or no? If, if it is, we're going to put a green color, okay? We're just going to put a green color saying it is. If we said MA is below the 10-period moving average, we're just going to put a red, okay? Fair enough. If I said the relative strength of MA is quite strong and it's stronger than the SP, we're going to put green. If we said entry setup, I'm going to say BO. Uh, let's say it's a breakout, and I'm going to say, let's say, example given 4%. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be looking at each one of these stocks and kind of saying, which one of the stocks looks most favorable? And here's the thing. Brand new investors, they want to know, is there one criteria you look at to make the decision? And they, want, they desperately want to hear, just give me one thing. And there's no such thing. <laughs> okay. So you're really looking to see which stock might have, let's say, more positives than negative. And even if you chose one of those, it doesn't guarantee, you knew you're waiting for that, so was I, that that one is going to go up, okay? You're just trying to stack all the odds in your favor, okay? And then if we also said the sector here, we're saying financials, okay? And I'll just put a little FIN for financials, okay? So let's just do this real quick. And before we actually do this, I'm going to kind of come down to this, and we're going to kind of look at these stocks, okay? So and before we go into the fundamentals, what I'm going to do is let me slide this over for just a second, okay? So when I look at this stock, I'm going to look at MA, and we're going to ask a question. Is it above, both, is it above the 10-period moving average? Yes. It, do we actually have the stock above the 30-period moving average for trend? Yes. Relative strength. When we look at the current relative strength, is that stock above the red line? So down below, we look at relative strength. And what you're going to notice is the red line is the benchmark. The benchmark is the S&P 500. If that line, that green line is above the red line, the most recent current standing of relative strength is above. We'd have to give that a plus uh, again. If I said of the entry setups, is this a bounce? Is it a breakout? We'd probably have to put breakout because it just went to a brand new high here today 
And now we're going to say, well, which moving average is it using as support? Now, if we said that there has been a couple touches on that lagging 20 period moving average, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure how far we're off the support level by drawing, by simply taking a trend line. Okay. So if I looked at this and said, well, how far are we off that moving average? The answer is 5%. Why is that of significance? Well, for many investors, they're trying to make sure that all their buys might be, let's say, between two, three, four, five percent If you get above 5%, that reward to risk ratio goes down quite a bit. Okay. Now, I'm going to fast fire these, and then that way we can go to the fundamentals. So if I looked at these and kind of said, what do we see here? I'm going to put a little red. Don't worry, it's going to be fast on this. Red, relative strength. Oh, interesting. No. Okay. Below. Okay, next stock. Now, let me kind of show you what I saw there. When we looked at Visa, it was below the 10, below the trend. Relative strength was below the benchmark. Entry set up, no. Okay, percent of support, it's below. Is that a positive? So far, technically, you're seeing that MA looks a little bit more favorable so far compared to of the first two. Now, I'm going to do these even faster, and I'll, I'll bring it all up, and we're going to move to fundamentals. Technicals is a part of it. So if I looked at, for example, let's say AXP, we're below the 10, we're above the 30. Relative strength, we're below. Interesting. Is there an entry setup? No. And are we? how far are we off a of moving average of what's been acting as support? Well, the short-term moving average has been acting as support, and we're below that now. Two more stocks. Now, notice this. When you kind of have things that you look at, you can kind of run them quite quickly. So if you look at kind of what has it been using as support, the shorter-term moving average. Kind of sitting on it right now, but slightly below, okay? Now, if we look at this right here, trend is positive, relative strength is going to be above. Do we have an entry set up as of today? What would you say? No. And if we said, it, are we off the support? We would say below, okay? I'm going to slide over in just a sec. Now, you might be wondering, James, is it, do you have like a script screen that you actually have this on? The answer is yes. I'm manually going through this so you can actually see the process. So if we kind of said, what has been acting as support on C? Shorter term moving average. Okay, so this looks a little bit better, kind of more like uh, MasterCard. Trend positive, relative strength negative. Okay, and now if we look at entry setup today, no, down day, not surprising, market was down. And if we look at the percent off support, we're gonna measure what percent, answer, about 1% off support. Okay, now let's bring it up. Okay, let's slide it back over. So, and I'm doing this kind of like a worksheet. A lot of people, that they, they learn more when they kind of go through a process. Now, if I just showed you that I have a script, just like we do technically, which by the way, scripts are not guaranteed for accuracy. Okay, uh, but there's a way that you can kind of just have it do this. But I want to kind of show you how you can break it down. So of these five, first ones, which stock kind of has more positives than negatives? Which one has more positive than negatives? If you were going to choose today, uh, it wouldn't be Visa, okay? It wouldn't be American Express, okay? If we kind of had to pick one versus the other, probably, some investor might say maybe a little MA, a little C perhaps. And if we had to choose the third one, maybe an investor might pick three. And my point of this being technically is you're just looking for where there's more positives than negatives. Rarely is it going to always be that they're all positive, okay? Sometimes, okay? Now, so here, here we're, what we're going to do. Now let's shift to the fundamentals, okay? So if an investor said in this case, what do you want to see in terms of the fundamentals to say, hey, I'm going to pick this one? And remember, technicals are a part of the sample plan that we went over the last two weeks. Okay, so if we said, what do you like to see technically before you get in, what would it be? And type that in the chat. So a couple of things that we wrote down, okay, and we've historically talked about is, let's kind of put this here, is revenues. Okay, and by the way, the way that it really shows on the Schwab website is not revenues, it's by earnings per share. 
So we're gonna type in, for example, earnings per share, okay? EPS growth. Now when I say EPS growth, we're talking about historically, like in the last one year, five year, et cetera. We'd also like to put with this, for example, uh, dividends, doesn't pay a dividend. Tells us something about where the company is. Uh, we're also gonna put here PE, price to earnings, price to sales. I'm gonna also include ROE, okay? And if we said, for example, a growth forecast, do they have a forecast of growth? And the last one I'm gonna put here is over under. So when we say over under, what in the world do you mean by over under? So what we're saying is there is that the stock, for example, is maybe trading over its intrinsic value or trading under its intrinsic value that's what we mean there okay now let's do this right now let's go ahead and log in to the schwab website and let's kind of take a look at this so what we want to do here in this case is log on to schwab.com let's take a look at some of these stocks and now when we do this and i'm going to kind of put this right here now we got about what 15 minutes and I know we can have absolutely go through about two to three other examples as well. Let me slide this over here. And what we're gonna first do is let's go ahead and bring up that first one. We said MA, okay? Now, if we bring up MA, okay? And you're now gonna notice if we scroll down, we're now gonna see some information where we can get the stock and its peers. So if I scroll down right underneath uh, to peers and ratio comparisons, we can see who are their competitors, okay? B, Fizz, Fizz V, uh, Fidelity, and you're gonna see global payments. Now, the inf what information we wanna really see here? Well, we wanna also go to where, for example, says, look, does it pay a dividend? Well, if we're looking at MA, it does. That one also does as well, okay? So first off, we need to kind of get a comparison group and it gives us one. We can also make up which group we wanna have. I will show you that in just a moment. So first off, if we were to look at this, let me kind of slide this over for a sec and said, which one is stronger? Well, first off, they both pay a dividend. Not much difference there on the dividend, they both pay little bit higher on the dividend yield for V, okay? Now, if you take a look at this, if we go to the, the, uh, the earnings per share growth forecast, which one of the first two columns really actually has the highest growth forecast? Well, if we're talking about a highest growth forecast, we really have to say, and I'm gonna kind of write down the percent, you, you really have MA has the higher forecast okay now the other thing i want you to kind of notice that i'm not going to include is what's the profit margin v is a little bit higher than that okay now this has two of the stocks that we want but let's say you wanted to kind of make your own group and what we're going to do is we're going to scroll up top and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to where it says research tools let's take the five stocks that we did research tools we're now gonna go down to where it says stock compare, okay? So right at the top, research tools, check. Go to stock compare, click. Once we do stock compare, this, this is where you can type in the stocks that you wanna look at to make the comparison. MA, B, we said also AXP. Now we wanna kinda of take a look at those stocks that you're saying, which one am I gonna pick, one or the other? And if I look at that, C, okay? Those are the ones we had before. So now let's kind of look and see what we got here. So now when we actually scroll down, we can see the information that we wanna see. Now, here's where we kind of get into some of the information. Of the, let's say, if we're just kind of look at the fundamentals first that we talked about, which one has the highest return on equity? Type it in. But if we kind of had to say the highest return on equity, it's gonna really be, uh, we see that's not even close, okay? It's really MA. I'm gonna slide this over in just a sec, okay? If we, for example, went down to, let's say, earnings per share, 
okay? What you're now going to notice is they're all positive, okay? That one is hard to differentiate between all of them. A higher earnings per share is better, well, because they might have a smaller number of shares, okay? So they're all positive. So I'm going to kind of say all positive. If we looked at the PE, which one is trading at a more an attractive valuation from a price to earnings perspective? Well, the lowest PE here on the table is 10. So we're going to kind of put right there, if we take a look at PE, you got a 10 right there. And if we're talking about price to sales, which one is also trading at, let's say, a, a very low multiple? Well, what you're going to notice is on that price to sales, C, JPM, and AXP are trading at a very low multiple. I'll write that down and we'll bring it, slide it over. So if I look at those, they're pretty dang low, okay? Now, the other ones, what you're going to see is MA and V. Those are not trading at, let's say, a low multiple. So when we look at MA and V, that probably tells us, and when you look at the PE, that tells us that these are probably not value names. They're probably more what? Probably more growth. Now, that's not bad if you have a plan for it, right? Now, if, if we talk about that earnings per share growth, let's kind of scroll down here. Which one has really grown the most over the last year? Which one? Okay. Well, if we're talking about the growth over the last year, the one that's been quite strong has been JP Morgan, has really led that. We'll kind of put a little positive there for JP Morgan. If we're talking about that earnings per share growth forecast, okay, coming up, which one has the strongest? And that earnings per share growth forecast is really coming in strongest for really uh, MA and Visa, okay? So when we kind of slide this back over, what we're kind of seeing is Visa, Visa and MasterCard both pay a dividend. When you look at return on equity, it was really MasterCard that was the strongest. Both of these actually had the highest growth forecast and really the three banking companies for the most part, including AXP, not as much. If we're talking about something that's trading at low multiples, it's price to sales. So we're kind of coming back to, when we looked at things technically, we said kind of MA kind of looked more attractive. When we looked at the fundamentals as well, we're kind of coming back to the same theme that MA looks kind of attractive, okay? Now, if we kind of had to say like a second stock, you know, that is also maybe pretty attractive, we'd probably say JP Morgan saw that technically, but the EPS growth was the strongest for JP Morgan. The PE was 10. The price of sales was actually three. The ROE in the growth forecast was not as strong as the card companies. Okay. Wasn't as strong. So if we're going to, we're going to go back and look at this. Now, now here's the deal. In a pullback market, when you see the market pull back a little bit, you have to understand that there's going to be probably a time where things might try to pull back closer to moving averages and or support. Now, here's the deal. This is why there's buy limit orders and there's buy stop orders. Buy limit orders is saying, I want to buy at this price or less. Okay. Now, one of the questions we historically ask was, if you could get in on this chart, where would you consider in getting in? And that answer really comes back to, A, I would like to get in, the investor says, close to maybe where the support is. Two, I would like to get in, the investor says, when it breaks maybe our level of resistance. Fine. You need to specify where those are. Let's say we said we want to try to buy in a little bit of a pullback. Well. Maybe we thought that pullback area was going to be at 445. What we're going to do on this chart is we're going to right click. We're going to come down to buy custom. And what we're going to do in this case is we're going to say with stop. Okay. Now, just because the stock goes down today doesn't mean it's going to go down tomorrow or the next day. Okay. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to say, look, in the margin account, we're going to allocate about, let's say, uh, $6,500 capital 
to buy shares of MasterCard, okay? Now, you might be thinking, well, this is dumb. Uh, don't worry, we've done that before. Meta, 16 shares of stock, okay? Just because we buy a smaller amount doesn't mean it can't make any money, okay? Or lose money, it, it is up $331, even though we had 16 shares, okay? Now, if we come back to this, what I want us to kind of see in this case is, where's that stop? Where do we think the support level is and how far below that, okay? Now, if we take a look at this, if we said, where do we think the support level is? Man, lots of support, kind of maybe right around that area of about 440-ish or so. Let's say 437-ish. If we took a stop 2% less than 437, it's really going to be at 428, okay? So if I went back and actually looked at this and said, hey, 428, Here's what we got. There it is. Now, how do we come to that? I'm just taking that 437 less 2%. That's how we got that number. Stop GTC. Now, remember, the stop is not valid until the stock fills. Okay? And we're going to come back and say not a day order, but a GTC. Now, this th there's only one way this happens. The stock needs to come down to this price or lower and fill. What happens if MasterCard doesn't pull back to that level? Well, the investor would have to evaluate and say, how close is it to the support level? Okay. And if it's not that far off, we talked about the percentages, they might say, I'm going to change it to a market order or a limit you specify or a buy stop, et cetera. But right now, we're trying to buy in a pullback in this example. Okay, there's the stop, confirm, and send. Now, here's the deal. What we need to understand is we don't want to just look at technicals. Remember, I made this comment to you before. If you were going to make a $5,000 decision, you probably need less information. But if you were going to make a $50,000 decision, you probably want more information. If you were going to make a $500,000 decision, I'm going to need more than just what happened today. And $5 million decision, we need more information. See, when the stock goes down and there's a red candle, a technician might say, I'm going to sell. It's very short term. The whole goal of the fundamentals is you have an idea longer than a day of what the company might do, but also with the idea of knowing what you're buying is if stocks were to drop, which stocks might be fundamentally attractive as the stock drops, okay, that's that's very important. Now, last thing we want to kind of bring up here, it says this order is based upon a dollar amount, noted, okay, and it's in the margin account. Second, with stop orders, there's no guarantee the execution price will be equal to or near the activation price. The stop is there. It could fill at that price or less. We said this before, the stop is not valid until the shares are purchased. So tomorrow, we need to see, did we get filled? We'll look at that tomorrow on the trend trading class at 1 p.m. Eastern. We're gonna go ahead and send that order. Now, your homework assignment, okay? Now, this picture that I did, I have a script. So you know that I talked about this week, the tech, uh, technical analysis scripts. I have these scripts as far as the fundamental viewpoint. I'll share those as well on X. So don't think that, my gosh, I have to manually go through it. No, we kind of did an in-class activity. So what I want you to do is I want you to pick certain sectors or industry groups that you're interested in. Pick three to five stocks that, that you want to compare and contrast with the technicals on. And then last, if someone were to ask you what technicals is of most interest to you, that you could state those because we're going to put those in the column headings. And which fundamentals stand out more to you or not? And the ones that matter more, we're going to put at the top. What we're going to do is like we've done with the technical analysis and scripts, which are not guaranteed for accuracy, the biggest thing we want to kind of do is have a way when we pull up stocks and we make a list that on one sheet of paper, we could actually see it right there, just like we do with technicals, okay? So this has been the classes we've talked about comparing and con contrasting stocks from a technical standpoint, but also fundamental.
Now, next week, we're going to talk about the financial performance of stocks. You have a lot of earnings, okay? That financial performance is stated on what's called the income statements. How well are they doing? What is their margins like? Why do we care? Well, their performance leads to earnings per share, which is a driver to potential dividends and valuation. So we, we, we want to be able to read what's on those statements and identify which ones are growing and which ones are not, okay? Because that is a main driver of valuation. Now, as I'm out of my time here today, we'll focus on that next week. I want to thank you so much for your comments and your participation. Remember that also that if you have not subscribed to the Trader Talks by Schwab Coaching uh, YouTube page, make sure to do that. Prove to me that you know how to do that because sometimes I feel like maybe they don't know how to do that. Go to the, the, the YouTube page, click subscribe. When you subscribe on the left-hand side, you'll see Trader Talks by Schwab Coaching. You can see all of our content right there, right on your mobile device or computer, okay? Now, I gave you a homework assignment. Make sure you do that. And then we're going to follow up on that next week as well. Remember with what we discussed here today, it was done for general informational purposes only and not be considered as a recommendation, uh, uh, endorsement of a particular security or chart pattern. We will also look at Walmart tomorrow. They did announce a three-for-one stock split. Pretty rare, very rare for Walmart and pretty rare in this market. Uh, we'll look at that technically more tomorrow as well. So thank you so much for attending this class on trading growth and value. And with that said, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, we'll have uh, our first session kicking off at 9.38 a.m. Eastern. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.